Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Lion Halftime. While most of us are familiar with the concept of gladiators in ancient Rome, few may be aware of the grim halftime shows between bouts of gladiator battles. Much like the major entertainment events booked for the Super Bowl, there was a show. But for these gladiatorial halftime shows, things were exceptionally more gruesome than they are today. The Romans needed something to keep people in their seats while waiting for the final battles to begin after the opening matches. For this, they used wild animals like starved lions, bears, leopards, and wild boars. Lions were often used to carry out death sentences in the ancient world. Instead of jail, the punishment was death. And of course, why not make a spectacle out of it? Lions could carry out the death sentence and entertain thousands at the same time. A popular halftime show was when the Romans would bring a pair of criminals into the empty arena. They would then put the criminals on a giant seesaw. When one pushed off the ground, he would go 15 feet in the air, while the other one slowly descended to the floor. And that was when they would open trap doors on the floor of the arena. A starved lion, maybe joined by some hungry bears, would climb out of the floor and immediately attack the criminals stuck on their seesaw. When one criminal pushed off the ground to avoid being eaten by a lion, the other would helplessly be sent crashing down to the floor. Roman entertainment sensibilities were pretty different from today's standards. Rather than general horror, they would place bets on which criminal would be eaten first by the lions and the bloody spectacle would get the crowd hyped up for the next round of battles. Number 9. Yellow Laundry The ancient Romans had a bizarre affinity for urine. In today's world, we generally shy away from anything contaminated with our own secretions. But in the Roman Empire, people used both human and animal urine in their daily lives. Here's the grossest thing they use urine for. Teeth brushing. Instead of squeezing dentist-recommended toothpaste out of a tube, they would simply use their own pee as mouthwash. They believed that urine helped maintain healthy teeth and a beautiful smile. And as a matter of fact, pee does actually make teeth whiter. But this is because of the ammonia found in urine. Today, ammonia is used in cleaning products. So while they were technically onto something, the concept nowadays is very grotesque. To be honest, however, apparently urine was actually extremely effective at cleaning teeth. But please don't try this at home just because I said so. The Romans also didn't stop there. They used urine to wash their clothing. Their preference when it came to laundry was old and stale urine. The smellier, the better. They would use it in a bucket mixed with water, soaking their clothes and then stomping on their shirts and pants with their feet to make them clean. They even used feces to clean their leather clothes, as they thought that feces made leather softer. Excrement as cleaning products. I guess you're supposed to use what you have at the time? Number 8. Blood Cure The Romans had cures for everything, but they didn't always make sense. For example, they would frequently use their own pee as a disinfectant to clean burns, lacerations, and even scorpion bites. Using urine as a disinfectant actually didn't stop until the 19th century. More urine uses! But the Romans also had another miracle cure in the form of gladiator blood. They believed that the blood from a gladiator could heal two major ailments, epilepsy and infertility. During gladiator combat, blood from wounded or killed gladiators would be collected in giant buckets, then sold in smaller vials to people in the crowd. Sadly for the Romans, gladiators were forbidden from fighting starting in the year 400. It was simply getting too out of hand but suddenly the gladiator blood supply was gone. So they turned instead to taking the blood of criminals. A man named Alexander of Tralles wrote down a recipe around the year 525 for curing epilepsy. He said that the best way to cure it was to wet some cloth in the blood of a criminal, burn the material, then mix the ashes with a good wine and drink it. This was all the rage for centuries. Number seven, the original slavers. One of the most barbaric things the Romans did was practice slavery. They practiced it to such an absurd extent that no other society has matched their hunger for slaves since. In the Roman world, slaves had roles everywhere, from households to the military, and even served as construction workers and were sent into mines. 
one out of three people living in Italy, and one out of five people across the entire Roman Empire was a slave. It was how the Romans built so many cities, roads, and other structures, and spread their empire so wide. It was all forced labor and slaves. In the mind of the Romans, being free was not seen as a right, but rather a privilege. They also thought that freedom was only possible because some people were enslaved. Therefore, in Roman society, slavery was never thought of as evil, but rather a necessity. They thought that the only way they could be free was if they enslaved the people that they conquered. Slaves were taken after successful battles, and then when slaves had children, they too would have to serve their masters. To give you a rough idea of just how many slaves the Romans had, they captured at least 75,000 slaves during the First Punic War, and that was only one small war. They also captured slaves through piracy, by trading with other empires, and by breeding them like chattel. One of the biggest slave markets in all of Rome was at Delos, constantly fed by Cilician pirates who raided coastal villages and stole people to sell. Number 6. Cruel Punishments the ancient Romans were desensitized people who loved cruel and unusual punishments, it seems. One of the most bizarre punishments anywhere in the Roman Empire was called poena cule, or punishment of the sack. It involved sewing a person into a leather sack along with four very specific animals. The person would be stuffed into the sack with a snake, a rooster, a monkey, and a dog. Then the sack would be stitched closed and thrown into a river. The individual would then drown inside of the sack while presumably being bitten by a snake, clawed by a monkey, pecked by a rooster, and gnawed on by a dog. Even the animals were being punished in this scenario. As unusual a punishment as this was, it was reserved for people who committed a very specific crime. If you were found guilty of parricide, which means killing your parent or another important relative, you could get the punishment of the sack. For the Roman people, society was very patriarchal. The oldest living male in a Roman family was basically like the king of the family and had impunity. They were able to boss around everyone under their roof and even people living far away, so long as they were blood relatives. If you were found guilty of killing the oldest living male in the household, you basically signed your own death warrant. If they didn't drown you in a river, they would do something else just as horrible. Do you think this horrifying punishment fits the crime? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 5. Brain Pudding Food was just as important in daily life to the Romans as it is to us today. But if you had to go back in time and break bread with these ancient people, you could find yourself sitting at a dinner table with a plate of brains in front of you. The Romans, while mostly eating simple foods, also loved to eat some pretty bizarre things that you probably would not enjoy today. Romans ate a lot of porridge. They liked pork and poultry as well as seafood. So far, so good. But if you were a rich Roman and could afford fancy and exotic ingredients, you were eating some pretty weird things. You might eat wild boar, you might dine on peacock, or you might have fried pig liver sausage. Brain pudding was extremely popular, as was boiled ostrich and scalded flamingo. Anything that moved and breathed was fair game to the Romans. They would eat dormice, fish liver pudding, and even spoiled fish. How does this sound to you? Maybe you're an adventurous eater and have already tried these things? One of the most disgusting sounding foods is something called garum. This was made by taking the insides of fish, all the blood and the guts and the intestines, and stuffing it into a barrel with a healthy helping of salt. This horrible mixture was then left in direct sunlight for several months. It would eventually turn into liquid at which point it would be strained and eaten with any number of dishes as a sauce. Apparently it was used on everything, because it added some excitement to your food. There are still some ancient garum pots and factories that have been excavated recently, and garum sauce was a huge business. Number 4. Infanticide Roman people were pretty indifferent about a lot of things in their society, from having slaves to getting rid of their unwanted babies. A recent study published in the Journal of Archaeological Science explains that infanticide was a widely practiced thing in Roman society, as well as other parts of the ancient world. This was before modern methods of birth control had come into play. One of the only ways to keep a family small and to get rid of a baby that would just cause trouble was to throw it away. 
According to the lead author of the study, Simon Mays, nobody knows for sure if this was an accepted practice or just something that was tolerated. But either way, they definitely threw out a lot of babies. When archaeologists excavated a villa from the 1st century AD in Buckinghamshire, where the Romans lived while occupying England, they found many remains. Specifically, they found 97 infant burials, the largest graveyard of babies anywhere from Roman times in Britain. This was not the only baby graveyard that's been found by archaeologists. They also found a site in the ancient city of Ashkelon, Israel, with over 100 skeletal remains of infants. But in Ashkelon, these infants had been thrown into the sewer immediately after birth. In England, the babies had been buried first. I'm not sure if that's an important distinction or not. Number 3. Roman Plumbing Going to the toilet in ancient Rome was one of the most disgusting things you could do, but apparently they loved it. To them, it was an absolutely normal part of life, but to us, it was like walking around naked in a sewer. Yes, the Romans were at the forefront of sanitation, but it was still gross. According to Pierce Mitchell from the University of Cambridge, the Romans even had legislation so that towns within the empire had to clear all human waste out of the roads and dump it somewhere else. And while you would think this would have improved people's health, it didn't. Romans were actually infested with parasites like whipworm and roundworm, the very things that cause dysentery. The reason for all these parasites and worms had to do with the public toilets and the public bathhouses. Romans went to the toilet together in a public space, even sharing the exact same brush on a stick to wipe their bottoms. And after going to a public toilet, they would often go to a steamy bathhouse and sit around with other Romans. According to Pierce Mitchell, this was likely a great incubator for parasites. People walked into the bathhouses covered in microscopic poop particles, then let them fester in the steamy environment. Number 2. So much birth control The Romans were so insatiable as a whole that they actually caused an herb to go extinct. This herb is called silphium, and nobody knows if it still exists today. It's believed to be extinct because it hasn't been seen in hundreds of years. The herb looked like any normal plant. It had roots, leaves, and small yellow flowers. It also oozed sap, which the Romans found a handy use for. Well, they had a handy use for every part of the herb. People would crunch the stalks of the plant and eat them as vegetables. The roots could be eaten as well, dipped in vinegar. They even fed the herb to sheep to make their meat tastier. They would use this plant to make perfume, they sometimes dried the sap and used it as a garnish for roasted brains and the cooked flamingo, and then there's the real reason that this plant was so popular. Silphium was made into a juice and then drunk as an aphrodisiac. It was also used as the first genuinely effective form of birth control. Romans used it to purge the uterus. The herb was so popular in the bedroom that many historians believe its heart-shaped seeds are the real reason why we still associate heart shapes with romance. But sadly for the world, the Romans used the herb so much as birth control and as an aphrodisiac that it went extinct. Number 1. The Vomitorium You may have heard of something called a vomitorium. For a long time, the vomitorium was thought of as a room that the Romans would have adjacent to their dining room. The vomitorium was said to have a basin along with feathers, where guests could go to barf up their food and make room for the next course. If the dinner guests became too full, they would simply excuse themselves to the vomitorium, tickle the back of their throat with a feather, and then barf into a bucket so that they could keep eating. It is the literal definition of gluttony. But according to archaeologists, this may not have ever actually been a thing. It may have just been picked up by popular culture in the early 19th century. Archaeologists say the vomitorium was actually a passage at a public entertainment venue through which spectators would spew forth into their seats. The vomitorium was just a passage leading to the aisles so that spectators could get to their seats quicker, but because of the name that the Romans gave it, in modern times people interpreted the vomitorium completely differently and came up with the idea of a room for puking. But to be quite honest, this is one horrifying thing that the Romans may not have actually done. Though of course, maybe they did, and we just haven't found the proof yet. Thanks for watching! Would you go back and live in the Roman Empire if you had a time machine? 
let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button for all the best videos from Origins Explained. See you soon. Bye!